got the youth event coming up that haven't quite posted yet, but uh, Pam and I will be hosting a youth event where, as part of the Avalon's anniversary, they will be showing a screening of Star Wars. If you have a youth or child who wants to go, let us know. We'll get tickets in advance because they're predicting a sellout. So that is July 10th, a Monday night, and no school the next day. No school the next day. Kids at heart, come and join us. Come and join us. Uh, we have a very special guest this morning, our interim conference minister, Reverend Doug Wooten, on his now 18th day of service. He's on his 18th day, 10th hour of service. <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us.
see some of my young friends that I'd like to forward to help me with the children.
it was wonderful to see our church filled with the young people with band. Yes. That are here utilizing the space and having a blast. So um, it, it, it's just great. Um, if you ever pop by, I know Kong came in and visited with some of the young people, the things that they were doing. But that's why church is here, folks, is to provide for our community. And these guys are really enjoying it. The other thing is that Friday, we fed about 100 people. Yeah, you fed the hungry. And <laughs> that was a whole lot of fun because I got to work with most of the people um, that I really love um, in the kitchen. And the folks seemed to really enjoy it. So it, it was a great week. Yes. And some are even back for leftovers. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> Who has a color yeah. concern to share? Yes, sir. I'm Elizabeth. Um, first thing to share, and I'm just hoping for safe travel. Scarlett's in Costa Rica on a language immersion, staying with her family, and she is having a fantastic time. That's and wonderful. It's really, it's really, really cool. She's yeah. with a few of her classmates and kids from other schools from around the U.S. Um, they had a little, and apparently this is going around. They had a little plane trouble on the way down and got to do a fun, unscheduled overnight in Dallas. Like, like all of us get to do, it's one of those rites of passage. So we're hoping they get back, um, you know, sometime before the end of the month. They're supposed to be back on Friday, but, you know, it could be 4th could be of July. So I'm hoping for safe travel for her. And also um, a concern, uh, our aunt, so this, I think a lot of you have met my father-in-law, Bruce, his sister is in hospice, Aunt Bonnie. She's one of my favorite people in the entire world. Uh, she has COPD and is really struggling. And she's home and um, her family is staying with her, but we are, we are hopeful that um, she's not suffering too much. And she's always maintains her sense of humor, so I, Look forward to seeing her soon and hearing her cuss a few more times. All right, <laughs> Peace. Shalom. Joys. 
But when it's a celebration of a life well and faithfully lived, it is. And it was good to be able to do that. So thank you. Hi. Um, my homeowner's insurance has told me I have to get a new fascia, get my carport top all repaired. So later, if someone can tell me about handyman services or who you might recommend, that would be nice. Thank you. Um, my colleague Mark Russell, he had some what he just thought was a giant or heartburn or something. Went in and learned they put him in the hospital and had three stents put in on Friday for 90% blockage in his heart. Oh, and he's still there because his other side I guess, has 70% blockage, so they're going to do that on Monday or Tuesday. Relatively young, he's 57. So Mark Russell, and he's in Los Angeles. He's a colleague of mine in LA. So, thank you. <laughs> there are two different things I'd like to tell you about. One of them is there will be a school board meeting. We've had some fun with uh, trying to do comprehensive ed class. I asked the red to help, and so far we're, we're not getting there. Uh, and I talked to your individual. You have your individual here from, from uh, the higher end. And I asked him to be certified. But the point being, too, is not only is there a school board meeting on Tuesday night, but there's a city council meeting Wednesday night. He's going to be with you. I'm Karen. I just want to give a shout out to the First Common Fire folks. We had the uh, Rocky Mountain Conference annual celebration. We started on Thursday afternoon, and Friday, and ended yesterday. Um, but we did, we, we tried to do, we call it the impromptu choir. We, we had like one rehearsal. <laughs> so, anyway, I just want to give a shout out to the, our folks that came and helped pull that together. It went out really well. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, I am the Reverend Dr. Douglas Wood. I am the Interim Conference Minister for the Rocky Mountain Conference of the United Church of Christ. I wanted to offer uh, prayers and concerns for our conference. Uh, but first of all, I want to thank uh, Pastor Paul for lifting up Juneteenth and giving us some history behind the meaning of Juneteenth. Uh, I never looked at it that way. Uh, 46 days, 43 days in pain is extremely difficult. Uh, I know that we've been in pain. But I want to lift, out, lift up our conference. We have uh, elected a new board of directors, and we are excited about what the board of directors are going to be doing. There's a lot of work that is ahead of us. And I invite each of you to come and journey with me for my time here as your interim conference minister to help build the body of Christ through our conference. Uh, we are on a journey to be the church that God is calling us to be. And I can't do it by myself. I don't have all the answers, but I know all of us collectively has the answers that God would want us to be. Thank you for allowing me to worship with you. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for your great wisdom that you have led this church thus far. God bless you.
in just the joys and pains of this world. Help us if we're wrestling with hard memories and lingering disappointments about our family life or fathers that were present or absent. Bring a sense of healing to those who carry the weight of brokenness in relationship with fathers. Help each of us to also balance that with a place of heartfelt gratitude for those positive father figures in our life. Help us to celebrate the relationships that nurture us and guide us. Let the good within us be carried on to future generations. Let the truth within us be a blessing to our families. Let the hope within us be showered upon children of this generation. Let the wisdom we have help to make life easier for those who build the future. Let our dreams for greater peace, greater tolerance, greater justice be planted in the hearts and minds of all the children of this earth. Let us accept the good that can come, even out of difficult situations. Help us to grasp the blessing of realizing that we're part of a very large family created by compassion. We pray this as we pray as Jesus taught his disciples by saying, Our Creator, Lord in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And it is not the true temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
scripture. One of the scriptures today is Genesis 4, verses 1 through 12. Now, the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and born Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next, she bore his brother Abel. Now, Abel was the keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, for his part, brought of the firstlings of his flock their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. It's desire for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother, Abel, let us go out into the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. <coughs> A reading from the lectionary that Reverend Dr. Doug Wooten is going to provide. Actually, when Pastor Paul gave me this this reading, I thought he was joking. <laughs> But from Genesis, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse number 1 through verse 15, it will read in this manner. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaths of Mamre, As he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servants. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourself. And after that, you may pass on. Since you have to come to your servant, so they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent. Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour. Knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant, who had hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before him. Them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old advanced in age, it has ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, 
after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I, shall I indeed bear a child? Now that I am old, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I do not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. Bishop. 
bishop of Alexandria, and the monk said, the devil, you say? <laughs> and the devil said, oh no, it's a lie, but now that I have your attention, it's a thing about the power of envy to distract us from our calling, to distract us from our mission, to distract us from the joy and contentment we will need to feel if we're going to feed all the hungry on this earth. Envy does get our attention. All of us have cast a jealous glance somewhere in our life. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus defined envy as grief at someone else's blessing. Isn't that harsh? Grief about someone else's blessing and somebody else's dirt bike. We feel it. It's a part of who we are. It's something we need to be aware of just to respond to, just to grow, just to be fully human. We need to know where that shows up. Those of the parents know that if you give one child a toy, you better do something to compensate another. Even on birthdays, you need to do something to distract the ones who don't get to open presents because that reality of envy is with us. And how does envy make you feel? Let's be honest, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel larger or smaller? Does it make you feel elated or disappointed? It is a curse. Envy wrecks us and takes from us the chance for feeling good about ourselves and others. And if you went to elementary school like I did, in Emporia, Virginia, people were always bragging about what their dad did and what their mom did and how good they were. So if you had a Father's Day type argument, it would go like this. You have three boys in kindergarten, and one would say, you know, my father, he's the best. He's a surgeon. And after he finishes the surgery, he takes a whole envelope of money and has to go to the bank and put it into a special drawer. And the next boy would say, no, that's nothing. That's nothing. My, my father's a lawyer. And after he wins a case, he comes home with a briefcase that is packed with money. And a third kid named Lewis John said, well, that's nothing. In the Baptist church, after my father preaches, it takes four grown men to carry all the money. <laughs> that envy factor is a part of who we are. And some of the greatest people in the Bible were not that great. They had character flaws. They had weaknesses. They had Achilles heel. Some were shockingly unjust. Some like Sarah, Oh, Sarah, you let envy get the best of you. Our lectionary text today tells a nice story. And often the lectionaries will pick the nice stories. Make the job easier for ministers. Pick the nice story. And everyone talks about Sarah laughing. And that's the theme that you hear throughout today in the lectionary. But how is this going, this story? First, we have these angelic visitors show up, uninvited. They come to Abraham with a message that he's going to be the father of a great nation. Well, this guy is already 75. And Sarah's eavesdropping on the conversation. Did you catch that? She's eavesdropping on the conversation and laughing because she's been 39 years old for 25 years. <laughs> and that's bad news if you're in the baby making baby business. That is bad news. So she's laughing because she knows that in terms of her understanding of biology, this is not possible. And then the angel catches on. Did you catch this? Angel says, oh, I heard you laughing. And what did she do? No, 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 no. And the angel corrected her again in the text. No, you did laugh. Hmm. Here's what the lectionary left out. Time passed, years passed, no pregnancy, no child, no future promise. And then the 
believing in angels. They weren't waiting. They came up with their own plan. How do we get Abraham to be the father of a nation? And then Sarah came up with an idea. She said, why don't I give this person Hagar to you to produce an heir? Now, Hagar gives birth to a son named Ishmael. Happy ending, right? No. No, because envy takes root in Sarah's heart. But surprise, surprise, guess what happens? Now, more than a decade after that, Sarah gives birth to a child named Isaac. Happy days, right? Now Abraham has two children. But then Sarah wants Hagar, the African slave girl, out of the way. Now, there's some translators who translate Hagar not as African slave girl as she was, but as maid. I'm going to question that. Here's why. Anyone ever contracted with a maid service? For a young woman to have sex with your 86-year-old husband and give birth to a male heir? Anyone ever do that? <laughs> I don't think so. Now, there are some services that provide that, but they're not called maid services. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? They're not called maid services. They're called something else. So she was not a maid. She was an enslaved African girl became a woman, and she was given by Sarah to Abraham to produce the miracle. Envy then crept into the equation because Sarah now wanted Hagar and her child Israel out of the way. In fact, she wanted them dead. That's why I had the Cain story again. Envy can get us to the point where we want to kill people. And so here's what she does. She bugs Abraham, nags Abraham, continues to nag Abraham. Abraham's walking away, but she continues to tell him, we've got to get rid of her, 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 we've got to get rid of her. We can't have two people who are heirs. We can't have two people who've got to get rid of her. So the story is told where Abraham, out of a modicum of mercy, they're going to send her out in the desert to die. There's no water for miles. There's no source of life for miles. They're going to send her out in the desert to die. Abraham gave her a skin of one day's water to carry over her shoulder, and one day's food to carry on his shoulder. She goes out into the desert and walks as far as they can. They don't know which way to walk through the desert. Think of that area between Yuma and Tucson, if you've been to that part of the country. <laughs> Where are you going to find water? And after walking all day and realizing their dire situation and they're facing death, it's interesting what Hagar does. Hagar can't find any trees. It ain't Grand Junction. It's like Yuma, which looks like the moon. It's like Yuma, and she finds a bush, and she puts young Israel under the bush, under the shade, okay? And then it says she goes a bow's way. An arrow bow shot away, so the young child would not hear. And what does she do? She cries out tears, cries out to God, cries out to heaven. And her one request is recorded in Genesis 25, and she says, don't let me see my son die. She was a mother and a father. Don't let me see my son die. And she's at a distance crying and wailing so that he cannot hear that. He's back under the bush. And then he talks about how she comes back, Hagar comes back, so they can sit together and die together.
And then as this story is told, they are saved by an angel who points them to a source of water, and they live. But more than that, Ishmael becomes the father of all Muslim children of God. And God used this horrible situation to create a beautiful new beginning. So most sermons about this topic you hear about Sarah laughing, and that's important to hear. But that's just half the story. Sarah laughed because, like us, we often dismiss angelic voices. That's not for us. I don't know if I heard that right. Sarah laughed because too often we can't envision God's future for us because it might be different from the past. We can't envision the angelic voice if it's different from the past. And Sarah laughed because she felt hopeless. Sometimes, when you feel hopeless, all you can do is laugh. Sarah laughed because in her mind it was just impossible. She could not intellectually conceptualize it. Sarah laughed because she was a realist. And I know because I'm a realist. And most of you are realists. Sarah laughed because she knew what it was to be tired. And I'm not talking about the tired you get at any conference meeting when you eat coffee and it runs out. I'm talking about bone tired. I'm talking about tired where you don't know where to go next and you don't have the energy to do anything. Sarah laughed. Because we cannot believe it. How can we not believe it, no matter what it is? We all have our it that we are not going to believe. Sarah left because she no longer believed in the angel's message. Perhaps she had studied too much German theology. <laughs> in seminary, boy, the Germans raised more questions than they answered. Whether you're reading someone called Rudolf Bordeaux, or Frederick Nietzsche, or one of my favorites was named Ludwig Feuerbach. They raise more questions than they do answers. She perhaps had studied too much theology. Sarah laughed also because she couldn't imagine a God who makes the impossible possible. Small God. Sarah laughed because she forgot that God is in the surprise business. That's what Easter is about. And Sarah laughed basically because she's a lot like us. Or I should say we're a lot like her. Now, it's not in the Bible, and it's not in the story, but I believe if we could listen in, if we could listen in, I believe we'd hear Young know, former slave Hagar laughed. What would she be laughing about? Because God transformed the hatred of slave owners into freedom. It took a lot more than those 46 days after that army surrendered in Alabama. Hagar is laughing because she was sentenced to death in the desert, and the angel brought living water. Do you hear her laughter? Can you envision her laughter that her son Ishmael is going to survive? The young Ishmael is going to become the father of all the Muslim children of God. Do you hear Hagar laugh? I do. She laughs because she breathes in the desert air of freedom. And sometimes you have to go to the desert to find freedom. Why did the monks go to the desert in North Africa? It was to get away from the corruption of the Roman Empire to find a place where you could set aside time to find yourself and God and listen to the voices of angels. I believe Sarah laughs because she gets to embrace the still breathing body of Ishmael. Now there are times for laughing and times for laughing in church. When you get through a major surgery without complications, it's 
times will happen. When your doctor declares the cancer is in remission, folks, that's a time for laughing. When you break the chain of addiction, or a family member breaks the chain of addiction, that's a time for laughing. Anyone want to share a time for laughing with the angels guided you in life? What was the occasion of a time for laughing? Don't be shy, because I'm going to pick on somebody if they're shy. What's the time for laughing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that one. When we go on your conference minister, and you, yeah, yeah, that's the time for laughing, brother. <laughs> What's the time for laughing?
ministry in a time of transition and this conference in this world. Come on. Wow. Don't be shy. Wait on. That's supposed to be your supervisor, people. Join in. Hands together. Let's enter into prayer. Didn't do it. Loving God, we're grateful for everyone who comes to serve others with a heart of compassion. And we pray for Doug as he takes on the task of interim conference minister. We pray that he will hold on to that beautiful heart that he has for social justice. He will teach us new lessons that we need to learn in racial justice. That he will be an instrument of compassion throughout our conference, inspiring our churches to be sources of light and hope and peace. And we pray for mercy and caring to be manifest through his work. We also pray that he would be the advocate for all of God's children, and we know that's where his direction is. So we pray for success, but we also pray for moments of contentment and joy along roads that can be long. But most of all, we just thank you for your servant and ask your blessing upon them. Anyone else want to share up words of hope or peace or love or just say good luck, God? Who wants to share some other words?